Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hello, everyone. Yes, I'm Patrick Lane. This is Javier Hase. I love how there's always a little gap when we introduce ourselves. It's always like, eh. Uh, it's good to see you, man. Good to see you as ever. How was your weekend? Good? It was great, man. It was really nice. You know, got to eat a bunch, rest, work. What about you? Great weekend. I became a soccer dad over the weekend. My five-year-old really? is in soccer. And wow. I asked her, she had her first game on Saturday. I asked her what her favorite part was. And you know what she said? The breaks. <laughs> the breaks were her favorite part of the game where she could come off and hang out with me and, and cheer on her team and drink some water and chill out how, and pick grass. So how do you, how do you call it in America when, when you get like drinks and maybe like something to eat after the match? After Down the match? Um, yeah. yeah. I don't know that there's a specific name for it. You know, there's the, wh what it is for kids is like a team snack. They call it like a team snack after the, The game, right? The team all gets together and has, I don't know, animal crackers or something, <laughs> right? Um, but, but yeah, that's it was pretty interesting to see that. And I guess I'm in a new phase of parenthood, this uh, soccer dad-ness. Down here, we call that the uh, fifth quarter or third half. So it's like the fifth quarter, right? After the fourth quarter, you just go, you know, grab something to drink, something to eat. That's I like, like that. <laughs> I like that. We should adopt that if we have not already, because that is Brand a good intro. idea. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Well, let's, shall we do our intro and then get into yes, some sir. quick news here? Let's get the credits. Let's roll it. All right, so let's dive right in. We've got an interesting show for you guys today. We have um, Kyle Detweiler from Clever Leaves will be here today to chat with us. We are really, really excited to have him on. Um, in the meantime, why don't we talk stocks? Why don't we talk some news? We got some yes, big sir. stories, Javi. Yeah, let's start with one of your favorite companies. You want to share the news? Yeah, why not? Why not? So guys, uh, ticker J U S. HF, J U S H F, enters Massachusetts. That's Jushi. Jushi Holdings uh -huh. is expanding their footprint. They're, they've acquired um, Nature's Remedy. Is that the company, Javi? About $110 million. Um, yes, sir. That's the it. Value of that deal. So I, I love this company. I think that they've slowly been, been uh, creeping up the totem pole this year and in the, over oh, the past yeah. maybe six months. We've seen their their footprint footprint grow. We've seen some really really good moves. I'm I'm yeah. bullish, and their stock is up. I think six percent today, or a little higher remember, than that. Do you remember it was a pick of yours before it went public? Uh, I loved it. We, we did feature them on, on several Benzinga Cannabis Capital conferences before they went public, and we were always saying like, keep an eye on Yushi, keep an eye on Yushi. It's happening. It's happening. So this uh, this Florida based company. company Uh, acquired Nature's Remedy today, uh, Nature's Remedy of Massachusetts effectively entering the state. What they get is two retail dispensaries in Millbury and a town I can know, like there's no way I can pronounce it right. It's Tings, Tingsboro? Well, Ting I get it. I, yeah. I think that was, a, that was yeah. a very valiant effort on your part. Tingsboro, Tingsboro. sure. Any, and anybody from Massachusetts, tell us how we should pronounce that. But Tingsboro is what I would have said too. So Millbury and Tingsboro, and a 50,000 square feet cultivation and production facility in Lakeville. Um, yep. So that's very interesting. We can see the stock is responding very well to the news. Yep. Um, I'd assume it has a lot to do. We always talk about how Florida companies get rewarded when they go beyond Florida. Uh, and my thesis is always revolves around True Leaves, you know, dominating position, yep. right? Um, I think investors like to see that the companies that manage to establish some kind of, of good foot, foothold in Florida, you know, know when to go to other states and not just, yep. you know, have that one big battle, uphill battle against truly. Well, and let's let's talk strategically about what that means for for them, for sure. I think 
when it comes to a Florida company jumping into the Massachusetts market, obviously that Eastern seaboard, everything becomes fair game. And Jushi does have other assets along the Eastern seaboard, which is definitely interesting for them in terms of their overall footprint. Mm -hmm. But Massachusetts, we keep talking about this, right? It's a smaller market. Massachusetts is a smaller state, right? Limited license, right? But when it comes to what that market is specifically, it may be the key to that Northeastern corridor until we really see action oh, yeah. in New Jersey and been. New York. Yeah. So I, so I don't know. I think Massachusetts, of all places to go, is, is probably a really, really good strategic market right now. For some reason, up to up to the point you said the northeast. For some reason, I had some kind of short circuit in my brain. And I saw you. Time, I saw some. I was hmm. I was picturing Massachusetts and Illinois. Don't tell. Don't tell either. You know, people from either state. <laughs> I won't. I won't. I won't tell them, Javi. Um, let's look at some others really quick, though. We've had some. Let's see who else is moving today. Consortium. Ooh is yeah. moving they're up about seven percent today let's see what news they've got that's cntmf let's see let's see looks like they filed a form d second oh they closed a private placement so about 17 million in financing that could have that could have some effect but that was back on the ninth there's got to be something more recent yeah all right, we'll come back to that one and see why, why they're why exactly they are up. Yeah, um, we, have, we have news out of uh, another company operating out of Colombia, and I say another one because Clever Leaves joining us today uh, has operations in Colombia. Uh, our good friend Isaiah Thomas, uh, you know, very well known NBA player, a all star, um, is the CEO for One World Pharma, O W P H. Um, and John Sally, also a, a, an NBA star, very, very involved in the cannabis industry, has joined their board of advisors. Um, so, you know, just quick shout out, uh, props or good friends, uh, for, for joining forces. It was, um, a very like natural, our Detroit Pistons. yes, sir. A very natural combination. Um, I think they were teammates too, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The bad boys, the Detroit boy. Pistons. That's right. Isaiah Thomas, John Sally, <laughs> when, actually whenever, Dennis Rodman before he went to the Bulls. Yeah. When, whenever yeah. I talk to a an NBA star, you know, uh, John Sally, Al Harrington, Magic Johnson, Isaiah Thomas, I always ask them what they think of Manu Ginobili. You know, he's like our Argentine pride. And the, the response is always the same, like incredibly the same words. They all start with, I love Manu. And then they say, you know, whatever they wanted to say. But it's, um, I don't know, it's an interesting response. I love that they love him. <laughs> Rick Mahorn. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. There's a lot of, there's a lot of those guys. A lot of guys from that era that we, we love and prize here in Detroit, right? Especially Ben Zinga, Jason Rasnick. Big, big fan of those Pistons. Um, so, yeah, yeah. That's fun. I always like to shout those guys out. What else, Javi? Some what more else? good news. A yeah, record high of 69% of Americans support the legalization of marijuana. That's according to a Quinnick Pack University poll. That's about 18% compared to the first time the interviewers conducted this survey in 2012 and 12% uh, more than in 2019. Another poll out of YouGov uh, showed that 25% of Americans now consume cannabis or have consumed it in the last year. This means that uh, you know, cons cannabis consumption grew by 56% in the last two years. How crazy is that? That's nuts. That's nuts. That's nuts. Well, and it shouldn't, it shouldn't really be any surprise to us with a nascent market like this, that it does grow so quickly. Um, and, and we all know cannabis has such high potential, uh, to be the next big, big wave of, of revenue of companies of growth. Um, economically, we're all pretty attached to that idea, I think, here. We um, mm -hmm. wouldn't have this show if we didn't. Um, but oh, yeah. I think it's interesting, 69%, and then you've got this potential floor vote scheduled for this week, right, in the House. Steny Hoyer mm -hmm. announced it late last week, or perhaps yes. his staff did, that there would be some sort of vote on uh, the banking bill, right? Yep. We'll see what happens with that. But, yeah. you know, I'm cautiously optimistic, as I always am. But you know, to your point, uh, this this YouGov uh, study that was conducted in partnership with Cresco Labs, 
actually confirms what you're saying. For instance, 44% of the parents with children under 18 who, who declared having uh, consumed cannabis in the last year said they had tried it for the first time in this past year, 44%. 43% of seniors who said they use cannabis say they tried it in the last year, right? So there has to be something, you know, it has probably to do something with, you know, legalization advancing, but also with COVID and the pandemic, right? Uh, right. Because, you know, if you look at the stats, you will see that 56% of the respondents of this poll, which, which included more than 5,000 people, say they use cannabis to relieve anxiety or stress. And 48%, they, they, they say they use it to uh, help with sleep. So You know what? I, I'm going to make this, this statement now, Javi, and let's circle back to this. Let's say maybe three to six months from now, right? After beverages like can have been on the market for a little while, right? And have spread through some of these markets where beverages are not a thing yet, right? Um, let's see what that percentage is and if it grows. My estimation is that right now you still have a lot of people who are consuming flour, consuming edibles. You know, um, I would imagine when, you know, that cannabis infused sparkling water or beverage hits shelves, there's going to be a, a, another big boom, right? Yeah. There's going to be a lot of people trying it for the first time because it's more approachable. You don't have to smoke something or inhale something or anything like that right indeed and and i'll leave you with one little fun tidbit from this study before we bring on kyle uh and you like this the midwest is actually more like the most uh the region that is most prone toward uh, edibles and beverages in the entire us you know the midwest consumes about 61 percent more cannabis uh cannabis edibles or beverages than the rest of the country I, it does not surprise me in the slightest, not in the slightest, because what else do we have to do here? No, just kidding. Um, <laughs> the, the Midwest, oh, wow. we, we do like we do like our cannabis in the Midwest. That is for sure. And we've got one quick question from Stephen about Hexo. Um, you know, if you guys haven't read it, I'll recommend that you go to newcannabisventures.com and read Alan Brockstein's latest article about how to play LPs. He doesn't mm -hmm. give you the step by step, right? But he will, um, he will, uh, yes, donkey limit. Thank you for your, your uh, thing about edibles there. He will break down what he thinks the, the trajectory is, right? And the yeah. path for some of these, especially the smaller or let's call them, let's not call them smaller. Let's call them newer entrants to the market, mm -hmm. how they succeed, right? I yeah. think it's a really good idea. Javi, anything specific about Hexo in your book? I mean, yeah. I, here's something that I, I find interesting, and you can find more details on Benzinga.com slash cannabis. Um, last week, we had uh, Josh Kincaid, right, of C3 Investments on the Benzinga Cannabis Hour, and he talked about beverages and distribution and the importance of having a strong, you know, distribution chain and distribution system in place. Hexo has a JV, a joint venture with Molson Coors. They call it Trust Beverages. And, and you know, uh, Josh was making the case for, for some of these established, you know, alcohol or, or, or tobacco players with strong distribution channels uh, coming into the industry. So, you know, if there's a reason to be bullish in Hexo, here's one, right? Their, their joint venture, their beverage joint venture with Molson Coors. And the fact that they are not, not only that they have a strong beverage line and a strong partner, but that their partner has strong distribution across the country, right? And that will ultimately be, be driving most sales, right? If you think of alcohol sales, right? Most of beer sales are not, you know, you know don't come from the supermarket, right? The, the higher margin sales don't come from a supermarket sale. They come from a bar. They come from a restaurant, right? right? right. Same thing here. It's, 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 it's all about who you reach, how many retailers you reach. Yeah, so there you go. Steven, or not Steven, sorry. Yeah, Steven Wilkinson. Thank you very much for the question. I hope that helps. Let us know if you have anything else. Um, I know we're going to hear a few words briefly about this upcoming Thursday and why that day is special in terms of what we're going to be doing with our broadcasting and our shows that day. Um, mm -hmm. And then after that, I believe we're back with Kyle Detweiler. So Aaron, do it. roll it, my friend. Yeah.
right. So the clean tech clean tech event is April 22nd. That is this upcoming Thursday. And I know many of you will probably be recovered from tomorrow's festivities by then. So we do hope you can join us. Um, but I think, listen, for the most part, you guys, what, what the folks on the events team have done um, and really what we're trying to do at Benzing is give you all the education you could need in terms of how to trade, what tools to use, um, you know, trade ideas from traders and educators, you know, just like you guys, right? Who are out there trying to trying to make money on the on this market, right? And in between, we're going to bring you some of these companies who are making news. So, would really, really love to have any feedback you have, um, any tickers you want to hear from. Absolutely, throw those in the chat. We we would love to love to have your feedback there. So now, if we're ready. Um, yes, we are. We I, would have, love. I have been for a couple weeks now. Bring yeah. him on. Let's do it. Mr. Detweiler himself. There he is. What's happening, man? Hey, guys. Happy 420 Eve. Happy 420 <laughs> Eve. Happy. What do you, are you, do you celebrate? Do you, do you do anything in particular for 420? Do you try to like hole up in a bathroom somewhere? What's, what, what's happening on 420 <laughs> for you? Uh, sales meeting update calls, calls, calls with international regulators, um, just keeping, keeping the Cleverly's business moving. For sure. One, one of the reasons, you know, we wanted to have you, of course, we're very interested in Cleverly's ourselves. We have been following the, 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 you know, the story since it was private, even, you know, when you first uh, invested in Cleverly's, you know, from Northern Swan, uh, I, I remember, you know, reaching out to you, you know, just like kind of pointing out some things I saw in the company when it was private. But, the, you know, the other reason why we, we wanted to have you here is because Clever Leaves is probably after Sundial, you know, the ticker that most people, you know, ask information about in our mm -hmm. chat every day. Every day. And I, and I mean, maybe five, six, seven requests every show. So, um, you know, with that, you know, a lot of people must know what Clever Leaves is. A lot of people probably don't. Can you tell us a little bit about the company and what you do? Yeah, yeah, thank you. Um, I think simply put, you know, Clever Leaves was built an idea, on an idea that cannabis production has been constructed in places where it doesn't make any environmental or economic sense, right? We probably should not grow cannabis in the tundra in Canada. Yep. Probably shouldn't be grown in indoor facilities in states like Massachusetts, where I lived for two years. Uh, it snows there. You know, what about a place where it's sunny year round, you have, you know, great photo uh, luminosity. Uh, and, you know, this is a place where botanical flowers grow uh, very well. Um, that country would be called Colombia. It's responsible for seven in 10, you know, cut flower imports to the United States. And so cleverly said, hey, that's our calling. You know, we're going to become uh, the biggest operator down there. Uh, you know, we are, you know, we employ over 400 people in Colombia, about, you know, another 100 uh, globally. Uh, you know, we create a 90% cost advantage compared to cultivating cannabis in other places. And we've done it in what they call EU GMP standards that took millions of dollars and multiple years to obtain that. Uh, we're the only, only company down there. And so we're doing things that are breaking barriers. Like I like to say that opening countries is harder than opening dispensaries. You know, just uh, we just got this framed. This is the first box of our Colombian CBD that we grew in Colombia and sent to the United States. And it showed up at our facilities in Arizona in a Department of Homeland Security box labeled evidence. Uh, <laughs> when you get white powders from Colombia, people raise an eyebrow and I get it. And, you know, we're changing that stigma. We're telling people, I mean, there was just this big study done uh, by Colorado State University looking at the carbon footprint of cannabis. You know, one ounce of cannabis could be like, you know, burning the gasoline that comes from a single car. Clever Leaves changes all that. We grow cannabis where it's where Mother Earth intended it, and it's yeah. it's it's better for the uh, economics and it's better for the planet. That's incredible. Uh, that's incredible. And and I I really appreciate what you said about changing the stigma there, Kyle. And I know Javi, you and I have talked about that many many times over the years, right? There's there's definitely um, a a booming business and a legitimate one coming from Colombia. Uh, and especially what you're able to do with cultivation there, how that affects your model in terms of scale. And, and so let's jump right into that. You mentioned EU GMP certification and standards and what that means for you in terms of how you go about uh, cultivating, how you go about shipping, everything that, that touches the product has to adhere to very specific standards, right? 
What does that mean for you in terms of how you're expanding your footprint into the European market? Yeah, well, it's 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 an interesting process, right? So you know, EU GMP, you know, starts with the European Union. So there's a reason that um, you know, if you looked at drug trial launches in in Europe for the last 20 years, it all centers around credibility for the uh, the German uh, uh, medical system. So half of drug launches in the last 20 years, you know, were first initiated in in Germany. So it's a credibility game, right? If you know, we went to customers in, in Europe and said, you know, hey, we're just one of another, you know, 100 different Colombian licensed producers. Uh, I think people would just yell. When we tell them that the product that we grow can be sold in a pharmacy in Berlin, people say, wait a minute, you, you can do that. So just a couple of uh, weeks ago, we announced a partnership with a company called Effifarm. You know, mm-hmm. Effifarm is one of the largest pharmaceutical companies in a focus on the central nervous system in Europe, you know, 1500 employees throughout the continent. It's owned by a 20 billion euro plus, you know, private equity firm. Uh, they've, they've partnered up with other cannabis companies in, in France, in the, in the French trial. Um, but a lot of the cannabis companies that they were meeting, were trying to get them to buy the, their own brands, right? You know, a, yeah. a Tilray or a Canopy wants to sell a Tilray or a Canopy brand. We told Ethi Farm, you sell Ethifarm brands. We provide you an ingredient. It's a very difficult to obtain and manufacture ingredient. And we also have an EU GMP, you know, certified, just like, you know, the other medications that you pro- procure for other, you know, symptoms. And it took a year to kind of arrange, you know, a conversation like that. But that that is what EU GMP does for us. Um, by the way, you should also know we got it almost a year ago. And you know, it's an in indication of how long things take in pharmaceuticals. You know, it's it's not overnight. So the certification that we had a year ago is just now leading into some of those commercial opportunities. And in a couple of quarters, you know, you'll start to see those things flowing through uh, on the income statement. So um, that's just one example of, uh, of, of the door opener. Mm-hmm. There's also, I mean, I, I know, you know, Europe is a very important market for you. Uh, but you, you're also making plays in, in Latin America. One I found very interesting was a partnership you announced with uh, our good friend Jose Basajar and, uh, you know, Verdemed. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that one in particular? You know, it, it, it's kind of your first move, right, in, in Latin America outside of Colombia, or is it not? Um, yeah, we're having great success in Latin America. I would, I would say, you know, Latin America tends not to even get a page on a pitch deck in, in most cannabis companies. But, you know, Mm -hmm. to remind people that there's, you know, 200 million people in Brazil, there is no domestic production that, you know, we, you know, are currently competing against. Everything is in an extract format, i.e., you know, matches very well with Colombia's requirement because Colombia does not currently allow us to export flour. I think that changes. Or sell it for for that matter, right? Exactly. So, um, so, and, and, and because it's a very pharmaceutical market in Brazil, uh, it has to be GMP certified according to Envisa's requirements. So we've announced three major partnerships. You know, Verde Med was the most recent. We had one with a company called Green Care and another one called Entourage Phytolab. And I think it's, uh, you know, there, there may be partnerships I'm unaware of, but, you know, that's the most I've ever heard anybody talk about Brazil. And the reason I don't see many people talking about it is because those requirements to accomplish all those different checkboxes are very hard or it's very difficult. And so Cleverly's has done that. And our goal is to make those partners, you know, we're trying to speed their access to market, right? If they wanted to go, you know, launch a product that they had to grow themselves and manufacture themselves. I mean, it took Cleverly's four years and a quarter billion dollars to get as far as we have. And yet, you know, we don't have, you know, uh, um, expertise around the Brazilian or the Peruvian uh, pharmaceutical markets in the case of VertiMed, that, that's a Brazilian and a Peruvian um, uh, partnership. And that's the business model of Cleverlease, right? We're trying to enable these downstream businesses to, to spread the power of cannabinoids. We save them four to five years worth of time, you know, getting cultivation licenses, getting the genetics to work, getting it GMP certified, stabilizing their products so that every time we make a 30 milliliter tincture bottle with 10% CBD, it is the same, you know, rain or shine, right? That takes a lot of work. And also for them to market those products, to open up those countries uh, for the first time takes a lot of energy. And that's why the partnerships like with Verde Med, Green Care and Entourage are so, so valuable. And I think there's just the beginning. 
Um, it's been um, it's been pretty exciting to watch those markets develop. We're watching Mexico uh, un unfold real time. Um, you know, I don't have any predictions on how fast it could go, but you know, I would watch you know what's happening in Brazil to to use it as a corollary to what could happen in Mexico. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Very interesting. And I, I'm going to circle back to Europe for one second, and then uh, perhaps Javi, if you have one more thing thing to close us out here. But Kyle, obviously, we're seeing some some renewed uh, effort in, in the European market by some very large companies in this industry. Not too long ago, we, we saw Curaleaf and the, the MAC deal. Um, you know, we're seeing IMCC and, and Metafarm Labs, um, you know, come together with a partnership. Mm -hmm. I believe that's in Germany, is it not? Yes. So, so I wonder, it, for the investors who are watching who may not be as familiar with the European opportunity, and what it means for you know companies like you guys that they'll be looking at. Um, I wonder if there's anything you want to say to them about um, that market specifically, the opportunity for Clever Leaves there, um, and just maybe what it means for the overall industry right now. Yeah, you know, my whole life I've been trying to figure out how to be a card counter, uh, metaphorically, <laughs> always looking for something that you know has a little bit of an advantage right you know hopefully yeah. i'm as good looking as the next uh e executive in this space but you know maybe if our business strategy can be one percent better you know that could make all the difference between making it and and not and you know here's the big picture i see on europe if you add the population of brazil plus europe if you count russia that's nearly a billion people the pricing in Europe today at, at a retail point, which is a pharmacy in, in say, Berlin, is about $22 a gram. Mm -hmm. The average pricing in the United States is about, call it $5 a gram, and it's roughly the same in, in Canada. So Europe, you know, which is about, you know, 70% you know, of that billion dollar or a billion population number I cited you, is, is bigger than the U.S. and Canada put together. The price pricing economics are four times as high. And mm -hmm. why does that, what, you know, what other dynamics are going on? You know, I can probably rattle you off maybe a, maybe a dozen different European cannabis operators, whereas I could probably come up with, you know, dozens uh, in the U.S. And I know there are thousands of operators in the U.S. There are just not that many people that have been able to tackle Europe effectively. It takes a little bit longer for these businesses to start. They're in different languages. The European Union is a bit different. You know, COVID is affecting Europe different than it is uh, the U.S., but that underpinning that this is a truly pharmaceutical product, right? There's no dabs or shatters being prescribed in Berlin, <laughs> right? They are tinctures. They are prescribing bud, though. I saw, like, I lived there they in are. 2016, and they were already prescribing actual buds. And, and I had a friend who got 40 grams of cannabis every 15 days. And it was insurance covered. He would just go to a pharmacy and get a free bag of weed. <laughs> you know how crazy is that? Just, just so you know. Something yeah. Like uh, well, no, and I think that's that's the kind of economic model that works when the product is truly pharmaceutical, right? The the cannabis mm -hmm. that is prescribed in Germany today is a it's a line of last resort, right? You get to it only after everything else has failed. Like think about when New York legalized, and they said, you know, only oils for a specific set of medications or, or, or um, you know, indications. That's where Germany has been. Imagine when it opens up, right? The number of people using medical cannabis in Germany, again, we're just talking about one country in Europe, is one in a thousand, right? In the US or Canada, where you've got a fairly robust recreational program that sits alongside of it, a, you know, quasi legal in the US, you're getting 10 to 13 people in a thousand. Germany is just starting, pricing is higher, but because it is so difficult to operate there, there are very few companies doing that. So why did Curaleaf, you know, one of the leading US recreational and medical players try to enter Europe is because what Boris said on the earnings call announcing the deal, he thinks what Curaleaf looked like in 2017, he saw in, in at EMAC, right? You know, it was a it was a beginning operation. They had a, a, a core set of countries or geographies in which they were selling. They had a license which was very difficult to replicate. You know, arguably in the last six months, there were three major players in Portugal. You know, Tilray was one of them. Yeah. Got acquired or merged with Afria. 
Emac was a second one. It was private. Uh, you know, got acquired by Cure Leaf. Arguably, Clever Leaves is that third. You know, we're we're still independent at this point. So I think we're very excited about it. Um, but you know, we have to temper expectations, right? It's not like what's happening in Europe today is what's happening in you know Illinois or Pennsylvania or even New York with a new renewed enthusiasm. You got to rewind the clock four years. Remember the struggles that this industry in the United States went through. And that's what they're facing in Lisbon for the first time and in Paris for the first time and even Amsterdam in the first time as they begin to, you know, implement a, a legal uh, legal program. So be patient, but man, that prize is going to be beautiful when it's won. That's fantastic. Um, I think yeah, have, thank you uh, for that. One more question. One more question. I, you know, we our producer Aaron is just saying we can go a little bit over time. Um, you know, a lot of people in the U.S. say I'm a big, big fan of Colombia. Uh, I, I used to visit several times a year, uh, and I'm a big fan of, of Colombian cannabis. It's probably one of the best, you know, cannabis I've, I've tried in the world, if not the best. Um, but then, you know, I, I tell my American friends about it and they were always like, you know, I, I'm not sure. I'm sure American bud is better. We have better bud. We have the best bud in the world. You know, um, it, I am, I am extremely bullish on, on the quality, notwithstanding. Now, you know, if you had to make the investment case one for Colombia, right. Uh, and two for clever leaves, right. And I'm not saying we compare it to other players there, but you know, if you ask me there are four slash five major players in, in Colombia, you know, Clever Leaves, Chiron, uh, Pharmacy Yellow, Abicana, and uh, now One World Pharma. So like, what's the investment case for Colombia and for Clever Leaves within Colombia? You know, without, without comparing with other companies, but you know, we have a pool of, of, of companies to choose from. Yeah, well, uh, you know, we're, we're long Colombia. We, we love Colombia. Um, you know, I think the case is, is pretty clear, right? Go visit one of those cannabis greenhouses in Southern California and ask them what they grew 30 years ago, right? Why do we have the Rose Day Parade in Pasadena of all places? How many rose plantations yeah. do you see around Pasadena today? Almost none, right? Where are those roses now grown? They're grown in Colombia. And so, you know, Colombia is natural. I mean, you can, cannabis grows like a flower, right? And so we're trying to track the corollaries. What, you know, what other flower um, uh, models can we copy? And roses grow very well uh, for a variety of different reasons in Colombia. But one of the benefits that people see very clearly in Colombia is, you know, the greatest deviation in, in the amount of sunlight or daylight that we get in any day in Colombia where we grow is 12 minutes from winter solstice to summer solstice. 12 minutes. That's how much the difference in the day can be over the year. I mean, in Canada, you have periods of time where there is zero sun. Right. So that is a, a reason that cannabis should not be grown in, in the country of Canada or, or the United States, but for you know, special circumstances. And everyone that is participating in the Colombian cannabis industry sees that vision. And so, you know, we're, we're proud to stand you know, with um, with those peer companies that you mentioned. I think with respect to Clever Leaves, you know, we are pursuing a, a slightly different uh, business model. You know, we are going after true, true pharma. You know, there are, by my count, only approximately four companies in the world that are EU GMP certified, both for cultivation and for extraction. And it yeah. matters that yeah, those are integrated. Less, less than 10 for sure. Like, wow. Yeah. And, and, you know, that list is going to get shorter because of Freya and uh, Tilray are two of them and, you know, coming, coming together for, for one. Um, and so that has yielded a number of advantages. So, for example, Colombia actually rations the amount of THC or psychoactive cannabis that can be produced. And as a single company, Cleverly's has approximately one half of the entire country's quota. That's how much faith the regulators in Colombia who knew, know all the different producers, that's how much faith they have in Cleverly's that, you know, we can hold the banner for Colombia and, and, and march that banner of legalization uh, for it. So, you know, again, we, we, we stand shoulder to shoulder with our peers. You know, we wish them all the best. I think, Right now, our competition is not, uh, you know, each other. Our competition is getting legal product produced, showing that Colombian cannabis could be a solution to combating uh, unregulated production in, in countries like Canada and the U.S. where they haven't been able to address it. Mm -hmm. um, and so we, we are excited about, um, you know, that is one of the opportunities. And we hope you guys get a chance to come down and see our facility. I mean, to see 1.8 million square feet of contiguous purpose-built cannabis production 
every Canadian cannabis executive that's come down has just, yeah. it changes their entire outlook on the industry when they see it. I, I, I define it as, as cannabis as far as your eyesight can go for, for you know, macro growers in Colombia. That's, you know, up to the horizon. Are you guys saying we should film a new field of dreams in Colombia in, uh, in a cannabis field? Is that what we're thinking? We might, might play soccer down there, but uh, <laughs> yes. Definitely. Why not? Why not? I, I, we've loved having you on, Kyle. And, and I think obviously we're both bullish and, and big fans of Cleverleaf. So we wish you nothing but the best. We see the opportunity and we're excited to see what happens with you next, man. Great. Well, yeah, thanks for having me on. Our sure. pleasure. See you later. How cool was that? That was awesome. Got to wrap it up with one real quick anecdote. You know that Harbor Side's uh, origin story also relates to cut flower. Steve D'Angelo drove past Monterey County all the time and saw all of these empty greenhouses. And then, and, and, you know, one day he figured, hey, if they cut flower here, they should be able to grow cannabis. Lo and behold, massive California company. Yeah, that, I, I hear that guy knows what he's talking about. That Steve D'Angelo. <laughs> yeah. Yes, sir. He does. Awesome. Well, my friends, thank you for joining us. This has been fun. I always love getting CEOs on here, and Kyle is is clearly one of the best. Just listening yes, to him sir. speak, you can see the opportunity unfold, and that's what's exciting to me when we when we talk to these companies. Right? It's not just oh, I have an, an idea, and maybe it'll come to fruition. It's, you know, he's, he's building it. You can see very clearly step A through B through C through D in terms of what he's doing. So I'm excited for him. I am too. We'll see what's next. Tune in tomorrow for 30 p.m. Eastern time, 1 p.m. Pacific. We have Gage Cannabis President, Fayan Monaco. They trade on the CSE. Check us out. Like, subscribe, and remember to visit Benzinga.com slash cannabis every day. All right, my friends. Thank you. Have a great day.